We are working on Jigsaw, our 1960 supercar inspired build based on a Boxster chassis that we put my dad's Mustang engine in. Last week, we got a bunch of wiring done for our ignition system and our starting. We installed an electric water pump. We still have to plumb that entire system. And we realized there's no brake calipers on this car. Look at that Fast and Furious Jetta vibe. We stole those calipers for another project and now we've got to find something else to put this on so that when we get it started, we can drive it and know that we can stop. That should work. Yeah, I have a habit of collecting um, What's the word? <laughs> cars? I, no, well, no, I, well, I have a habit of collecting cars, but in particular, I have a habit of collecting boxers with blown engines and then turning them into other things. So I think we can just use the calipers from this future project car to put onto our current project car so that when we go to build this car, we're gonna need to find brakes again. So it's like we're juggling calipers between all the projects. Fun. Looks like there's a wheel lock on this bad boy. Not a problem. He's got the master key set. Could break into any Porsche. <laughs> their wheels, anyway. Yeah, we could steal all their wheels. This is, this is, I feel like this is going to be used in a future flip court case. Hold on. You're right. Um, we could help them service all their wheels. There we go. I like yeah. that. Nope. Try again, Cinderella. Hurry up. The boulder's coming. Open the door. I'm gonna go to this end. No. Nope. Closer. Just hit him. Nope, close. There it is! Oh, there it is! First try. Wait. Put this on. This will catch all of your hijinks. Oh no, wait, take that me. back off. Look in that bag, there's something in there for you. So last week we went on a road trip in the Slandos. It was excessively cold in the car because the HVAC was not working. So I picked that up off of Timu for a couple bucks. Oh man, they got flat. Oh man, look how flat it is, 24 PSI. That's not right. That'll do it. This video has been paid for and sponsored by Timu. Timu is basically like the dollar general of the internet. Anything you can think of is super cheap. Now everything I have in the tool bag that I brought with me, including that tire inflator and the heater, have all been purchased off Timu. So while that tire is inflating, let's use these wrenches I got off Timu. But wait, I actually have a tool I could use. This bright tool should work. Also purchased off Timu. There we go. Ah, these actually look pretty decent for how cheap they were. They're even ratchet. And flex. And we got a 46 piece tool set for home and auto, which is actually going to live in the slant nose and I purchased it for that reason. Because look at the plethora of tools that you get for only 10 bucks. 10 bucks. Wow! Favorite part, there's even a swivel extension. Suction cup. Oh, I could probably pull the glass out of that. Assortment of trim tools and a pry bar. So what may be the world's cheapest flashlight I've ever bought. This was like a dollar and change. Look, it's finished. 32 PSI. This was actually the tool I was most excited about with the team order I made for this ad. It was the most expensive tool at around $48. But a tire inflator this size that's battery operated is pretty sick. 
And I'm impressed with how well it actually works because, let me look at it, how tiny it is. But it, it, it feels robust, it feels solid, it feels like a pretty meaty product. Right now, Timu has site-wide sales with up to 90% off, and as always, free shipping. And the best part about that free shipping is that if they're late, you get a $5 free credit. Download the Timu app through the link in the description down below for more perks. So now that we got the calipers off, it's time to put the wheels back on and push this thing back out. And by put the wheels back on, I mean it's time for Tony to put the wheels back on. You know, what's up with that? It's good for you to get out of the office. Back down in the trenches, back to my roots. This was a Boxster base chassis, had very small cooling tubes. But like we noted before at the back, at the very ends, they are much larger than the rest. <laughs> you can see this hose is, is a good bit larger at the end than it is right here. And that's because Porsche used the same radiators on the Boxster base, the Boxster S and the 996 Carrera 911. And they decided that the base did not need as much cooling as the other models. So they had much smaller coolant pipes. The nice thing is the components at both ends we're still the same size as the larger, more powerful models. So the only thing that we'll have to deal with when we want to get more cooling is some larger pipes in between. So part of getting the car running is we have to figure out the rest of the cooling system. The front end has radiators that need to be mounted. The Porsche Boxer radiators typically live in front of both wheels here. However, what we would like to do in the long run here is to mount and do a center mount radiator up here, but the body's gonna dictate exactly how that lives up here. So rather than putting the cart before the horse and mounting one now, and then having to work around that later, we're gonna go ahead and put the regular OEM style radiators onto the car so that we can complete the system and actually have a closed circuit for the coolant and be able to run this and make sure everything else works. These cars just go around and vacuum up the road. Yeah, because they have these giant <laughs> holes in the front bumper just to pick up everything. I'm surprised there's not any cigarettes in here. There's always cigarettes. Yeah, the other thing I noticed, if you look at that radiator, yeah. these are completely open. Well, it's funny you mentioned that because I, these have been open since the day they came off. Which, this one looks fine, but look at this one. Yeah, that's pretty dusty. It, <clears throat> I noticed that this one, somebody thought to uh, put some tape on the ends. That certainly and, uh, was not me because I never used that tape in my life. Oh, Tony's using my screwdriver as a pry bar now. I'm not the only one. I'm not prying with it. I am using it as a hose clamp uh, release tool. A pry tool? <laughs> I have you on video. <laughs> don't think that's supposed to happen. Why is that like that? That's pretty gross. 
we put these caps onto open brake lines so they don't like weep everywhere. But this plastic rubber stuff's supposed to be like impervious to brake fluid. So I don't think it's that that broke around. Something broke down though. That's gross. These are base model brakes on this car. Well, there were base model brakes on this car. We took um, brake calibers off of another base model. Um, and base model Boxster brakes are actually really good. Uh, somebody told me that Mustang guys are actually using these as upgrades. And we've actually used these as upgrades on early air-cooled 911s as well. Um, so they're gonna do really well for what we have. I'm sure we will end up upgrading them in the future. Might be Boxster S brakes or something, or Boxster S brakes with larger rotors or something completely larger, but I think that's probably overkill. And so for now, you can't rush temporary. Did you know that the camera with the autofocus tracking just labeled as an infant, so? Well, that's the biggest compliment I'll probably get all week. <laughs> Trying to figure out why this uh, brake line uh, bracket, support bracket wouldn't line up and bolt up. I realized that's because our rear wheel is back almost five inches. And so the brake hose is a little short um, for, for its new application. So it's gonna have to live there for now. This is the diagram of a Mustang cooling system. This is the diagram of a Boxster cooling system. There are probably twice as many hoses in the vent line on the Boxster as there are on the entire car for the Ford Mustang. So we had a bunch of parts show up now so we can continue working on the cooling system of Jigsaw. Right here is the coolant tank, for example. So while I begin plumbing the cooling system. Wiring fun with Tony once again. Yep. So to make the cooling system work, we've got a bunch of components here. Like I said, we have our coolant overflow tank. We got some elbows. We got some fittings to adapt to the tank itself and some other parts. We got a cap here that we're gonna cap off this thermostat housing. So we're actually not putting a thermostat in the car since this thing is externally going to be cooled with an electric water pump. So we no longer need one. Basically, like Tony said, this system is pretty complicated. The engine system is not, but the actual body of the Boxster is. So to kind of have a hybrid that makes sense, we have to do a lot of adapting. Also, this is a pipe that Tony ordered that's galvanized and this fitting's supposed to weld into that and this fitting's aluminum. So we're waiting on the, uh, replacement for that to show up today. Thanks, Tony. So on a Porsche Boxer, the coolant tank lives right here. You can see there's two lines that run to the tank, actually, that are still in existence in the engine bay. So what I'm gonna do is get this aluminum one to mount right here. But before I even get there, I need to adapt these threaded holes to have the right barbed fittings so we can tie into these hoses be good to go. No, that's not cool. Did you see the angle that changed to? Oh yeah, see I told you it's all messed up man. And that wasn't even me, it was messed up in the first place. I think whoever welded that bung in like it got all I, I, I mean, I wasn't figuring on the tank being temporary, you know, so I didn't get the cheapest one. That's true. So yeah. seeing as we're at where we're at, I think what I should do is cut that 
the threaded part of that down a little bit, like you said, and then just kind of thread it in a little bit and it'll just weld it on. Weld it on, that's fine. Then we have to worry about leaking and it's gonna go there yep. anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, you know, they're gonna blame us for messing up the threads, so. Yep, let's weld it. We have the technology. My hood died. That felt good. Ah! Yep. Apparently, it died overnight because I was just working just fine yesterday. I'm wiring up the trigger for the fuel pump relay, which just so happens to be tied into the cooling fan relay, so we'll power them all up at once. <laughs> it does not want to, I'm not sure what's going on. It does not want to crimp and it won't release until it gets crimped. <laughs> Boom. Okay, that's the release. Now you're gonna do it again? Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, I, I kinda like the pain. So now that the fittings are installed in the coolant tank, it's time to actually install the coolant tank. I'm gonna pull off these two hoses and replace them with longer hoses that will each run to this tank um, the tank's gonna have to be a little higher than anticipated because this lower fitting is straight and not an elbow. Thanks, Tony. You're welcome. And also because we're just getting this thing temporarily running so we can do some testing before finalizing all these parts, that means I get to zip tie the tank up and not worry about making a bracket yet. So I got it hooked up here, but the uh, thicker hose wants the kink on itself, which shouldn't happen seeing as you know it's what? brand new and made by Continental. Yeah, <laughs> and the whole box is like that though. Look at yeah. it. Yeah, yep, it's it like is. a flattened snake. Look at yeah. that. Yeah, it's. I mean, that's a mess. Look, look at that. Yeah, yeah. That, that's not supposed to happen with hose. <sighs> it's always something. It's supposed to be like this hose, where it keeps a nice uniform shape as it bends, because it's heater hose. Why are you like this? Who hurt you? You can't win for trying. Here you go, just keep it like that forever. Yeah, there we go. I just hold it. Okay, so this elbow's for underneath the car and it's gonna go from the water pump here to the body with the coolant lines that run up to the front, right? Now there's a catch to this. We have this fitting that needs to go into this elbow because this is supposed to run back to the coolant overflow. We couldn't buy a piece that fit our exact needs, so I'm gonna cut this down. We're gonna punch a hole in this, we're gonna weld that make our own.
Got the fuel pump wired up and conveniently that's now supplying power for the cooling fan relays as well. The only thing we have to do is have something to trigger them, which is going to be our water pump controller. Ooh. Yeah. We just got to hook it up to this wire. So basically this is going to wire up almost like an aftermarket radio. Battery power, ignition power. We'll call this the antenna. And Does it have the dolphins? The dolphins? Remember the Pioneer units have the dolphins that would swim oh. to the music? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do they have the dolphins? <laughs> Tell me it has the dolphins, Tony. It, it, yeah, yeah. It I mean, it's a water pump, so it's gotta have dolphins, right? There's a couple of connectors that hook up, you know, to other components that came with it, like the, the temperature switch um, and a ground. Like I said, it's almost like wiring a very simple head unit into a car. I labeled all the things I was doing. So when I want to draw up a wiring harness that I can actually read later, I remember all the things that I did because I won't remember them next week. I've got the nipple welded into the elbow. So now it's time to start plumbing the actual cooling system. Tony ran out and grabbed this T-fitting so I can tie that in as well. I think we actually have all the components we need now to finally seal this cooling system. I'm gonna start by cutting down some hose here and prepping this elbow before I put it into the car so there's a little less work to deal with, you know, down there in the dungeon. So let's begin, shall we? Just like washers, hose clamps are also directional. Tie it in here. Gonna run this over to there. And then this one needs to actually go over to one of these two right here. And then this still needs to run to there. There is not a lot of room under here either, but that's okay. Why well, have a shop with a bunch of lifts when you can use the shortest lift and lay on the ground? Big brain moves. I'm rethinking this. I think I'm gonna flip it that way. I think that way worked better because now I can run from there to there and from there to there. Now the underside is handled, I need to deal with the outlet of the uh, water pump here, which is gonna come up and elbow over into our water pump adapter plate here I made a couple videos ago. And there's another thing there too as well, I gotta take this plate off. I don't have a gasket on there, so I gotta pull that off, put the gasket on, clean up the uh, casket surface. And then uh, that'll be sealed on this side then too.
ended up double clamping this side of the flange because there was no like beaded edge on the tube yet. That should be enough for our temporary running right now. I will probably do a beaded edge though later when we do the final assembly after we rebuild the engine. So we got a water pump block off plate. It's ran down to the uh, outlet of the water pump down there. We have the inlet of the water pump running to the underside of the body. We have the two junctions running off that to the heater core stuff. I think we're almost done here. Ryan, we got a bunch of big crates and boxes to open up. Ooh, I like that. I think this is gonna be the last pieces we need to get this thing started. 